on U.S. soil rests a volcano that is due for its next eruption. Imagine a landscape so alien that it feels like you've stepped onto another planet. A vast expanse of blackened lava flows stretches as far as the eye can see, punctuated by massive craters and towering cinder cones. This is a place where Earth's fiery past is frozen in time, telling a story of violent, awe-inspiring volcanic eruptions. But here's the twist. This seemingly dormant volcanic landscape isn't quite finished just yet. In fact, scientists think that it could erupt sooner than we would expect. So where is this place? Because we're not talking about the Yellowstone Caldera or Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. We are talking about a little known place in Idaho, a fantastic world known as Craters of the Moon National Monument. So what can we expect when Crater to the Moon decides to wake up for its encore? Let's talk about it. The story of Crater to the Moon is an epic one that began around 15,000 years ago and started with a series of volcanic eruptions. Imagine molten rock bubbling up from deep fissures, spilling out into rivers of lava that ended up hardening into the landscape we see today at Craters of the Moon. Over the ages, Craters of the Moon has seen not one, not two, not three, but eight major periods of eruptions. Some lasted just a couple years and others lasted several thousand years. And while that may sound pretty unpredictable, there's actually a surprising consistency going on here. Each eruption period, regardless of the duration, produced a similar amount of lava, about one to 1.5 cubic miles. For reference, this 1 to 1.5 cubic miles created enough lava to fill the entire Great Sand Dunes National Park. You know, except with lava instead of sand. The landscape of Craters of the Moon was dramatically reshaped each time, with new formations like cinder cones, spatter cones, and lava fields emerging across the land. Now, the amount of lava spilled is only one of many examples of how the eruptions at Craters of the Moon have been very similar to each other but I'm getting ahead of myself. Fast forward to today, and scientists now believe that Crater to the Moon is due for its next act. Over the past 15,000 years, eruptions at Crater to the Moon has occurred approximately every two to 3,000 years. And wouldn't you know, it has been over 2,000 years since the last eruption. In other words, the timeline hints that Crater to the Moon will most likely erupt again within the next 1,000 years. And while that might seem far off, in geologic time, that's like tomorrow. So what would the next eruption look like? And how dangerous is it going to be? Well, predicting future volcanic activity is not an exact science, but there are some things that can give us some pretty strong clues. By studying the past eruptions at Craters of the Moon, we can predict a whole lot about what future ones will probably look like. Volcanoes may be explosive and fiery and destructive, but sometimes they are predictable somewhat, which I guess is kind of nice, if that's any consolation. Based on what we know about the history of Craters of the Moon, it is likely that the next event would be another basaltic eruption. And basaltic lava is unique because it is low in a chemical compound called silica. This low silica content means the lava will be much more fluid, meaning that it can flow relatively far from the eruption site. Also, instead of a violent, explosive, and let's be honest, apocalyptic eruption like we might find from Yellowstone, Craters of the Moon's lava would flow out in broad, smooth rivers, traveling up to 20 miles from the eruption site, but not wreaking mass destruction all over. So, that's good. We also think it could form very similar formations to what we've seen today. This could mean new cinder cones, fresh lava fields, and spatter cones that create dramatic new terrain features. Another reliable clue for us is the amount of lava that was produced in each eruption period. Like we said, previous eruptions at Craters of the Moon have consistently yielded about 1 to 1.5 cubic miles of lava. So if history repeats itself, we can expect to see about the same amount in the next eruptive period. This would be enough to blanket the area in fresh lava, and perhaps even alter the park's boundaries. Now, before we start packing emergency bags or running to Idaho to watch the eruption, depending on what kind of person you are, let's talk about the good news. Craters of the Moon is actually classified as a low-threat volcano. 
This doesn't mean it's not going to erupt, but it does mean that the style and impact of an eruption are likely to be relatively gentle compared to more explosive volcanoes. The main hazard here is the lava flow, which fortunately is pretty slow moving. Slow enough for people and animals to get to safety well in advance, even with the low silica content making it more free flowing. Nearby communities like Arco and Cary, Idaho are far enough away that they're not expected to face any immediate danger from an eruption. So now that we can relax a little bit, let's talk about what exactly makes Craters of the Moon such a unique place. For one thing, Craters of the Moon is one of the few places in the world where volcanic activity is concentrated along a large rift, or a crack in the Earth's crust. This rift, known as the Great Rift, is what drives the eruptions and unique formations in the area. Fun fact, the Great Rift also plays a key role in the Yellowstone supervolcano, and if you want to learn more about that, I have a whole video talking about Yellowstone. Moving on, the land here is primarily composed of basaltic rock. Basalt is the same rock that makes up much of the Earth's crust. Basaltic lava with its low silica content erupts at scorching temperatures between 1,100 and 1,250 degrees Celsius. When it cools, it can form a variety of shapes, from smooth, shiny flows to rocky, fractured landscapes. These formations make Craters of the Moon a geological wonder drawing scientists and visitors alike who want to see the power of Earth's inner workings up close. For now, Craters of the Moon remains a quiet and hauntingly beautiful reminder of our planet's active geology. Visitors can explore the landscape, walking on lava flows that are thousands of years old, marveling at cinder cones and lava tubes, aka lava caves, and taking in a view that truly feels otherworldly. Craters of the Moon stands as a testament to Earth's explosive past, but also as a hint of what might come in the future. While the future eruption is classified as a low threat, the region's history of regular volcanic activity tells us that an eruption is almost certain and that it's only a matter of time. And when it does happen, Craters of the Moon will add yet another fascinating chapter to its long volcanic story. Now, its future volcanic activity is actually only a very small part of what makes Craters of the Moon so fascinating. For example, did you know that the landscape has also played a key role in our mission to send astronauts into space? The landscape of Craters of the Moon was a key player in the race to get astronauts onto the moon. And if you're interested in learning a little more about how exactly this all happened, go ahead and click the video right here. I don't know where to point. It's, it's a spoiler, it's not actually there. I have to put it up there later. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.